Shani, how are you? C can you hear me? Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much for making the time. Hey, Prosper, how are you? I I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So you're in Melbourne, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where about are you? I'm in Sydney. Well, just across the pond, huh? <laughs> <laughs> great stuff. Hey, thank you so much for making the time. I know you could have been busy doing really cool stuff, writing copy, attracting clients, I just got intrigued by your uh, answer and our connectivity and I thought, hey, why don't we have a chat and find out what you're all about and what you actually do. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Ditto and thank you for making the time. I've had a look at your website, had a little look at your book, obviously. So, you you know, it's great actually that you're SEO because as a copywriter, I'm not SEO. So, you know, when those times where my clients say, you know, specifically SEO targeted content. I mean, if that's something that you do, then, you know, it's great to know that you're there. Oh, absolutely. You see, you, you were saying all that stuff, but I was really mesmerized by your shelf there behind you. <laughs> wow. This is my favorite thing in the house. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. How many compartments? each way oh my god wow wow it's not enough <laughs> it can never be enough what are you talking about oh tell me tell me tell me so you've come from zimbabwe when did you come to australia um i've been in australia nine years now wow all right and uh yeah just been really working as hard as i can to literally grow a business that is now profitable and i'm enjoying working in it and I want that for everybody else that I work with and partner with or whatever it is. So, yeah. And, and yourself? Oh, I mean, I was born here. But I'm first born Aussie. My, my parents are both from overseas. Um, so Whereabouts? Uh, my father's Sicilian. My mother's English. Your, your dad is Italian? Yeah. Oh, okay. My wife is Italian. I don't know, Calabrese or whatever it is, oh, but um, all, all I know is we manja, 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 and <laughs> all of that stuff. Oh my God. Oh. oh, I love it. Yeah, so do you watch um, Sushi Mango and um, and all those guys, or Sebastian Maniscalco? Have you ever... Have you... I love Sebastian. He's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> up Italian and just... <laughs> my favorite one is like... Um, when he's talking about how back in the time people never used to, I, I mean, when, when, the front door? yes, the front door. <laughs> I love that. And he's like, and now when people knock on the door, everyone's like, get down, get down, maybe I should be murdered or something. <laughs> no, well, you know, the other one that I love, Crossbay, is when he's talking about when they go to like Subway and he's like, what? You've never made a sandwich before? Just, just put it through. Hey, what was that? Just put it through the garden. <laughs> oh, we're always we're always laughing, me and my wife. And, um, you know, I, I, I sort of get the humor because our parents are sort of like that. Very conservative, trying to save money whenever they can. Um, you know what I mean? And, 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 and the, the very thing that happened to Sebastian happened to me. As a day when, when my dad, because my dad is still in Zimbabwe, right? And he's like, oh, when, when can I see the kids, see my grandkids? And I was like, dad, why don't you tell me a time that works for you? Or here's my calendar. And he's like, oh, you're a big shot now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know how Sebastian says his dad says, oh, you're a big shot now, you're a big shot. And I'm like, dad. <laughs> No, it's it's hilarious. It's um yeah, the similarities are just so 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 funny. I'm I'm glad I'm glad we connected on that one. So <laughs> <laughs> that my other favorites are those uh, sushi mango guys. Have you seen them? No, I haven't heard of those. Oh, uh, I think they're called sushi mango. It's like they have all these characters that they play, and then they're like, w when I was your age, I was my age. You know what I mean? Like this. <laughs> 
He's saying like I was tough and you guys don't even know how to you see everybody's just coughing from COVID or whatever it is. It's it's so hilarious. We we had the big wall, you know? And 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 the they're just trying to say that their generation is way tougher than our generation. But um the the way they, they, they talk about it, he's driving with his son is like it, when I was your age, I was driving when I was two. I drove myself from the hospital, you know? <laughs> And he says it in an Italian sort of accent, and it's just hilarious. Hilarious. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. That's funny. Ah, great stuff. So how did you start writing? Words that sell. Yes, I've got that one as well. Yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I keep, I keep it real close. Because, you know, English is, is not my first language, right? So whenever I want to write something, I'm like, uh... How do I? How do I? How do I? And then, and then when he comes out, he just looks like, wow, how does he do this? You know? It's like the magic. <laughs> yeah. So how did you, how did you get involved? Look, I've been writing for many, many years. Um, I was freelancing to the Australian government as a writer while I did a law degree. So I've got a. So you know the secrets. Career. <laughs> I know all this. Well, funnily enough, one of my major clients was the Australian Federal Police, so I've got a secret level security clearance. You know, I was I was traveling traveling nationally with them. Um, you know, as a freelancer. So wow. And and then I did a law degree, thinking that I was going to become a lawyer. Yeah. And halfway through the law degree, I was like, no. And I love to write, Prosper. And so, look, to be honest, like for me, um, you know. I've got to really manage um, how many calls a week I have because I'm, I'm actually an introvert. Like, I get energised by being alone and by writing. So I love and I, I love to speak with people, but I've also got to manage it. Otherwise, I get drained. So, <laughs> well, so, so me, sorry. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, I love to speak to people. But what I'm saying is, like, I'm in no way a coach or anything. You know, coaches need to be with people constantly and I just don't have that capacity. But what I do do really well is, um, you know, because I've also studied human behaviour. I'm, I'm a facilitator of uh, Dr. Martini's work. Wow. So I use all of that in, you know, creating strategic words that sell and, you know, being able to place them in a way that takes people on a journey. So I just love it. You are going to be my new favourite person. <laughs> All right, let me tell you something. Let me tell you why. Because because people come to the internet to get information. And if you're the person providing that information, they get to obviously know, like, and trust you. And we all know that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Now, half of the time, a lot of people come to me saying, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know. And I'm like, who are you trying to talk to? All right. Yeah. They haven't got that aspect of getting into... I shall call it Sally from now on into Sally's mind, right? Yeah. To find out who they really need to serve, what they need to tell them at that particular time. Because sometimes some clients are not ready to buy then, but you need to make sure that you have carved out a little bit of space in their head for when they're ready or to allow you and give you permission to continue and work with them moving forward. And that is where there's a big disconnect, you know? Oh, uh, you know, I, I totally, totally am on board with that because something that I see a lot of, which is, it's really hard to explain to people, and when I say people, it's hard to explain to clients, but where they get it wrong is they're writing for themselves, they're not writing for the other person. And, you know, they think that they can just put some content up on their website or they can put together a social media post and then they get crickets. And it's like, because you're talking to yourself, you're not talking to them. I love anyway, it. I could sit here all day and... and I love it. I love it. it. I love it. You know? And also, half of the time, people write for their own industry. You know what I mean? Like, I was talking to a lady who does um, insurance. And I asked her a couple of questions. Why do people actually want to deal with people like you? It's not because insurance is in case shit. It's because they want peace of mind. Are you letting them know? That by dealing with you, 
they are avoiding risk, avoiding hustle, and they're gonna look good in front of whoever they're doing that for in the end, and they're gonna at least sleep with both eyes closed. You know? <laughs> Things like that. You know? Um, yeah. Just case in point, and I gave him an example, and I was like, we went to a birthday party. Yeah? And at or you even have one of those spritzer things. <laughs> Such a wog. All right, you know what? We have that in my house, and I'm always complaining because now my wife just buys cordial or whatever the little flavors. We don't even get, like, soft drinks and anything. I'm African, all right? I did not swim the whole ocean so that I could come here and just drink water. Just looking, man. Just. <laughs> oh, that's gold. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So there I was telling my client, "Hey, listen, you you're doing it wrong because people only listen to marketing that speaks to people. And if they're the people, they need to raise up their hand and say, "Hey, listen, I'm the one. I'm the person that you need to be talking to." But I guess maybe they didn't take that class when they were. They were teaching it at entrepreneur school because Because I realized you know what anyone with a laptop a pair of sweatpants and maybe a mobile phone Can literally masquerade as an entrepreneur, you know, and they just keep want to get away with it You know, and I'm like what book have you read lately? Oh, no, nah, Facebook is good enough, you know, because they just read through other people's profiles You know, and then that's how they get their information how do we survive? Anyway. <laughs> In a world of stupidity. Oh, you see, that's why we carve our own little time like this where, you know, it's just this little time of insanity, you know, and of sanity. And the rest of the world can just, pff, I don't know what words they're using these days. But, it's, you know what, I, I think I can work with you. Are you expensive? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm probably about mid-range, so I'm, de I'm definitely not cheap, but, you know, you get what you pay for, so. What? Tell me about your business, Prosper. Which part? Well, tell me what you do, because it's also good for me to know, when I'm working with my clients, if I can be utilising what you do. Okay, so, more or less, I literally am a door-to-door -door salesman and I sell doors. I love it. You know, I started my career many moons ago as a, as a commission-only insurance door-to-door -door salesperson. Oh, how, how hard did you... Or, or how, how much did you hate yourself? <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, did I learn? Yes, yeah, great. I learned how to sell. What? All right, so you're going to knock on somebody's house and you're going to be like, hey, you're going to die. <laughs> my god you've got the best of both worlds you're italian english you know you've got the roman empire and the british empire all in one and you're just really went letting it go to waste like that <laughs> wow so, so tell us that you sell doors cool so 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 predominantly uh, i i try to work with small to medium businesses and really help them with generating leads okay um, but half of the time when they do generate these leads, they don't have a place for them to then help them convert. And pretty much after converting them into customers, they don't have a way of retaining them or making them buy again. So in the whole process, I created a blueprint, which I literally take people <clears throat> um, around. And yeah. it is this blueprint that I literally use myself to just literally show up every single day and that's why I've got so much content it just comes out of everywhere Pfft, content sorry let me hold on to that one I just... <laughs> don't go don't go don't go <laughs> I might need it later you know um yeah so so it's it's predominantly helping um 
customers discover who their ideal customer is, um, craft a message to go to that customer, and then yeah. really define what the market looks like, because not everyone is your customer, and then yeah. what media is best suited for them to reach out to that sort of customer. And in the process, we laugh, we joke, high five, and all the rest, and they pay me money. So <laughs> it's just that simple. I just wake up, you know, exercise, laugh, and then people just pay me money, and then we do it all over again tomorrow. <laughs> you know? I, love, I love your outlook. I yeah, but, but predominantly my uh, main gig is search engine optimization because I feel like it's it's um, it's easiest, it's, um, it's quantifiable. You cannot measure likes, comments, and shares. You know what I mean? But you can you can really quantify the raise, um, the, sorry, that, that was English leaving the building, the, the rise in, in, in Google, <clears throat> all right? Yeah. Um, and I figured one thing about how SEO actually works, and it's only just two things, which is basically optimization and authority. The rest literally is just so that people can fill up books and videos. You know? It's amazing because I don't have the knowledge about SEO and it just it just all seems so daunting and like it's just too much of a moving beast. Okay. But so, I'm, so are you listening? Are you taking down notes? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking down notes. All right, yeah. two things, optimization and authority. So optimization, uh, let me tell you the backstory of it. So <clears throat> in 19... <laughs> in 19... I don't know, when was the internet discovered? But I was your age. Yeah, when I was your age, yeah. Yeah, right? you, you know, we used to go to Google and ask them ourselves and then come back with the answers. But Google discovered that, they discovered that they could lie to people and get away with it. You know why? Because it's easy, all right? So what they did was they created a whole big facade that whenever you type information into Google, you're getting that information from Google, not from other people's websites. So they want to maintain that lie till they die, which yeah. I don't think is going to happen. So for them to be able to look good in the people that are typing, they have to make sure that they're providing the right kind of information with the, uh, or the right kind of content. That's so that people will keep coming back to Google, consume ads, and businesses pay them. So that's their business model. But for you to look good and for Google to favor you, they have to look good themselves. So you gotta make sure that your content on the website, what you do, where you do it from, and how you do it is so clear that whenever people jump onto the website, they're not gonna bounce off and jump away, making, making Google look bad. So my job, Every single day is to tell robots that I'm not a robot. All right? <laughs> and in the process, we're making sure that Google understands um, what you do, who you do it for, and who needs to know about it. All right? And then there's a second side where robots are involved. It's called the authority side of things, where Google wants to understand that are you the right kind of person with the right kind of information and are they are the websites that could literally vouch for you to say, yes, I think Shani is a good copywriter or I think Shani is a sham, all right? Yeah. So yeah. each website that vouches for you is like 100 points of ID. So our job as SEO people is to make sure that we validate that your website really needs to be seen higher up ranking. And we do that by connecting you with other websites that already are ranking or other websites that do the same thing that you're doing. So each of those links become a little vote and that little vote is what Google counts and says, okay, so you've got 20 votes that validate that you're a copywriter, which means you are maybe in the 34% average of other websites that do the same now they will be other things that they look at bounce rate um you know usability do people stay on the website do people do two or three actions on the website do people click things on the website do people do the actions you ask them to do 
So basically when we then take on a client on an SEO journey, we want to make sure that all of those functionaries are happening to make sure that Google looks favorably on our client and eventually puts them higher up so that when anybody types in whatever keywords, it's understandable that that's the website that needs to be there. So, yeah, but it's, it's a quite a lengthy process, isn't it? It's not like you just get it done in a week. Like it's a, it's a journey, isn't it? It, it usually is. You know why? Because the algorithms are always changing. And the best part about it is SEO is a zero sum game. So if one person is on position one, that means another person cannot be on position one. But <clears throat> obviously, you are Italian. You would have remembered when your parents were buying things at the bazaar or at the market, you know, fresh food or organic stuff. You would notice that the people that were right at the entrance or right at the center where the person is doing the auction or whatever, the center of the market, those are the people that would sell the most instead of those that were a mile away from where the action is they would always carry back their rugs back home because nobody wants to go all the way there all right yeah. so i'm thinking the the federal police let go of you because they can't find all the dead bodies and you know where all the dead bodies are hidden <laughs> yeah that's it and on the second page of google because yeah. nobody will find them there you know? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No one goes to page two of Google. So that's that's pretty much what I do, really. So when I meet a client, we really sit down and, and try and figure out, do they know who is going to buy their product? And then pretty much, what is the buyer's journey like? What is What does the buyer want? Or what's the procedure that they think? And... In, in sort of many industries, people already have a predefined buying process, right? Like you can't go and buy a, what can I give an example of? You can't buy a plane in Woolworths. You know, you know what I mean? Like that's just never going to happen. So quite a lot of people are just shining up their planes in Woolworths, hoping somebody's going to buy them, you know? But you know what people are looking for? Toilet paper. That's all they want. <laughs> Damn straight they're looking for toilet paper. <laughs> you, know, you know? So, so it's, there's no product um, and, and market match that is happening. So that's what I then help people to really, really make sure that they're sending the right kind of message to the right kind of market using the right kind of media. And yeah, the rest is the stuff they pay us for, really. Do you know? Well, I absolutely love your perspective, and I mean, thanks for taking the time to explain a bit more about SEO. I mean, it's it's definitely a technical beast that you know. It's not something I ever want to do, but I but I I feel like I have a little bit more of an understanding with the way you've explained it. So I really appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Well, don't take my word for it because I think the algorithm has already changed now. So you're gonna have to learn it again. <laughs> I told you it changes all the time. <laughs> yeah, so so pretty much where I can see sort of a, a big, big synergy. First of all, I mean, obviously, I already like you, so you can't get rid of me now. <laughs> Second of all, um, I, when, when we are doing all of this stuff, we're sort of discovering who the actual client is trying to get the client to understand what the product is. When you give a person a pen, obviously besides the first thing that they do is write their name, right? But they already know what to do with it, right? Yeah. But if you say, I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, there's some sort of explanation that you need to do. First of all, obviously, maybe this is the first time you've had to speak to a crazy SEO person who leaves and breathes it and, and, and finds ways of trying to explain it. Because I always wanted to explain this to my own grandmother. But now that she died, I didn't have an opportunity to, to explain it to her. Now, anybody who listens, <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's taking on Freddy's, Freddy's role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's that... Yeah, you know what I mean? So I always want to make sure that when I'm dealing with people, they have an understanding of what's actually happening. And 
And I feel like when you can explain something so well that somebody actually gets it, then they assume you've got the solution to their problem, you know? Um, half of the time, people just don't buy because they are confused or, you know what I mean? It's like a deer with uh, flashlights. Every time, every time you, you freeze them up, they're like, oh, you know what I mean? So a lot of people, you would understand this, they don't want um, to to make a mistake. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to, to make a mistake. First of all, maybe it's a business or their finances. And with whatever it is, you and me get paid so that somebody has somebody to blame, you know? So, yeah. so, so that is why we then charge what we charge, you know? Cause, cause then if they can point a finger at us, we, we get them paid for that risk. Yeah, absolutely. hundred uh, percent. Well, I, I mean, I don't know if this is relevant to the SEO world, but certainly from a content world. Um, you know, I've become I've become pickier and pickier about who I work with because if people don't let me do my job and they tell me what they want and they don't allow me to guide them to the strategy that's actually going to work, then it near fails every single time. And like you just said, it ends up being my fault. And to a degree, it has been because I haven't put them in their place and said, no, that's not going to work. Because, you know... People have these visions about what they, what their content should be about. And again, it's that, but that's not going to get you the results. And so, mm-hmm. you know, what you're saying about being being the person that they blame, 100%. Oh, when, when you see clients starting to tell you what to do, you're not leading enough. Because yeah, I, I don't think they'll tell that to their dentist. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't think they'll be telling the brain surgeon, ah, cut here. Yeah, just right there. Yeah? yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's what I mean. So it's, I've gotten to the point now where if I start to see someone trying to yeah. do that, then, you know, I won't, I won't, I'll, I'll avoid working with them if they're quite strong willed because they won't get the result. Or oh, pe- people like that, um, they're, they're looking for a way out. They are absolutely looking for a way out. Um, normally we have people that we, we work with. Okay, so. I, I'm working predominantly behind the scenes. Flashlights on our dashboard start going off when somebody says, oh, I can't give you full access to my website. Because that's a big scarcity mindset that, because they're afraid, what am I going to do? Your website is not even converting. What What <laughs> is the worst that could happen? Yeah? I can actually leave you at least looking a little bit better. You know what I mean? Your glorified brochure is not helping anyone on the internet. So if you don't let us touch it at least, just the, the least that could happen is give it positive vibes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's so true. It's so true, though. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, see? see. Oh, you, got, you got plain water. <laughs> Uh, well, with the way things happen in my, 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 my household, if I keep opening and closing the door, everybody thinks it's, you know, free for all. It's a smoker's board in here. So, <laughs> so I bring the whole family and bring them in. <laughs> Great. You know what? I mean, obviously, um, you say you don't like talking to people, but I like chatting with people a lot. Yeah. No, so, no, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Trust I heard you. <laughs> You can't take that back. The first card is the deepest. You know, I was actually starting to question my own existence. You're like, yeah, yeah, I don't like talking to people. You know what I mean? And I'm like, whoa, damn. How do you even get no, past that? What I, no, what I was trying to convey is just that I'm not an extrovert. So I'm just, it's, you know, I couldn't be a coach. That's why I do what I do. Well, neither am I. I just talk to people and once we talk, then I find out how how they do what they do. And if I like what they do, then I invite them, you know, into my circle. But now I was about to invite you to certain things, but I think I'm just going to have to withdraw my excitement. You know, you know, yeah. You already told me you're expensive. You don't like talking to people. Oh my God, like, how does this even work? Like, how do you even get clients? Because I end up working with people like you who can take a joke. 
Uh, so, so who do you, besides the police, you know, I, I, I couldn't work in the government. Because all it just takes is to tickle me, just slightly, and then I can divulge all the state secrets. Like, it's that simple. <laughs> all over. Prosper's done. <laughs> yeah? Oh, man. So you vowed to secrecy, huh? Yeah? Do they do they tell you when you came when you went into the federal police that you have the right to remain silent or whatever you say can and will be used against you in in the court no, of law? Because I wasn't under arrest, Prosper. That's only if you're under arrest. So how what I'm black. That's the only way you deal with the police. Like how would you find yourself waking up? Are you a snitch? Oh <laughs> yeah. Is there cameras? Is this being recorded? Oh my god! So you, you like undercover right now, yeah? No, don't be silly. No, I don't work for the AFC anymore. <laughs> How do you get any work done? You spend your day mucking about. Uh, this is this is work. Do you know what's going to come out of this? Well, you and me are going to work together and then pretty much after this, you're going to be sending all your clients my way. <laughs> Do you know that? Come on, I'll put in work. 30 minutes of all of this stuff. Oh, okay, maybe I'll send you an invoice then. <laughs> For your time. I'll send you one Oh, righty then. Now, but um, you see, the thing is, with, with the stuff that I do, I, I, don't, I don't touch most of the work. I do the strategy side of things. Um, I've got a team, really big team behind my, my back that basically look after all the, um, you know, client work and everything else, but I oversee everything that happens and we don't prescribe and we do not charge people until they start seeing value. So pretty much, um, that's where our guarantee is, you know, and, um, half of the time, we do get the result and you know jokes aside or anything else it's too boring this whole world if you're not going to be throwing around a couple of laughs here and there and enjoying because this is work if i'm not going to enjoy this where else am i going to go and you know otherwise after this I'm, I'm, i have another call and maybe two more calls and then i take my little girl for a ride and that's a week gone yeah. You know, I don't, I don't even get to see the outside. So if if I don't, if I don't enjoy this, then what's the whole point? I could have been, you know what I mean. And um, yeah, I'll tell you something funny. Looking at your books, I mean, obviously, I, I'm being mindful of your time and everything. You know, I buy my books secondhand from the Salvos. Yep. All right, and some I get gifts, and some I actually ask people to give me books. Especially when they're moving or whatever it is, or on Facebook Marketplace. But because I've got so much time, I'm creating, not me, my team is creating a website where I now get to sell these books. Because in the last three years, I, I remember the numbers. In 2017, I read 87 books. 2018, that was 94. And in 2019, I think that was 64 or something like that. I don't know what happened. Um, so those are the, the, the numbers. And I, I put the books and then... Have you ever been to a hunter's house and then they have like trophies of all the animals they've killed? Every end of the year, I take a photo with all the books that I've taken. And, you know, and I'm like with my... my, my, my yeah. Trophies. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I do that. But now they're piling up in the garage and then my wife is now like, you don't buy any more books. You know, it's, it's an Italian thing. I don't know. She, you should see her. She's, she's an animal. And then she, what, so what I'm now doing is I've created a website where I'm selling this book secondhand. But in the process, when somebody has bought a book, guess what else they're giving me? Their home address. So I can stalk them. But better yet, <laughs> better yet, better yet. Because all my books, um, uh, personal development, marketing, sales, they're all business time. 
So anybody who's going to be buying those books is an ideal client of mine. So when I have their address, I now have an opportunity to write them a newsletter every single month. And I kid you not, three days ago, I put up in the business, business, business group. I was like, I want somebody who is a good copywriter that I can work with so we can draft a monthly newsletter that goes out so that I have yet another channel that I can use to sell to people. And there you are, unless that's not the person you are. Because I feel like if you're that good with words, we can write that newsletter going out there. It kills two birds with one stone. Whenever that person is a really good client and they're a really good person, you have copyright work, I have digital marketing work, and whatever happens, happens. I love it. Perfect. It's similar to writing an email. The only difference is, hey, so are you sending it to them in physical form or are you emailing it to them? The, um, the, 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 the newsletter. No, no, no. We will be, um, we'll be writing it and sending it in physical. Because I do a lot of stuff in, um, in, on online. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of find yet another channel that could be utilized offline. All right. So there's this guy who has been sending me this. So this is one page, two page, three page, four page. He's been sending me this ever since. I don't even remember when he, um, when I signed up for this, it was probably one of my poverty days, but it's all about business and marketing tips for those looking to get into business and those looking to change or create an addition to their existing business. And what he normally sells is how to sell to China, all right? But in the process, he just writes about his whole thing. He puts a recipe there, and then he puts, you know, tips like this. Is direct marketing dead? One tip, and then one other tip could be what is copywriting, and then whatever joke. And then, and then it, this comes without fail every single month on the 11th of the month. I have, he's already done Pavlov with me, you know, I anticipate this thing. <laughs> yeah? Oh, you, you know Pavlov, right? Yeah. Yeah, my first degree was in sociology and criminal psych. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so I've been Pavlov, you know, and all, every day, every time when it comes to the 11th, something, I, I, I crave for it. I love it. You know, and I've got a whole, I've got a whole stack of them there. And I just thought to myself, wait a minute, I'm enjoying this because it's, it's yet another thing that I'm not doing on the screen, you know, besides my books. Right. And, and how, it's such a great idea, Prosper, because people are getting a physical, so the, the act of letter writing has been, has, has been dead for a while now. Yeah. But so, so people, the only thing we get in our mailboxes these days are bills. Yeah. So you're sending something that adds value to a person's life in the physical form with a quality, you know, two, three page experience. It's like, that's why Pavlov's dog is working on you because it's something joyful in your physical hand. Look at this. Look at how many I have kept. You would know Frank Kern, right? Yeah, oh yeah. All right. If you know Frank Kern, I've got a whole gang of his stuff, like all this stuff from all the things that he says, you know, like, and I keep it. I keep it. And all this, it's junk. You know, I could have thrown it in the bin, but I don't. One, one of them, I even stuck it on my wall there. See, the other great thing that you saw in that, that process was the people buying books still books still value the holding of the book. See, I don't read on Kindle. I still want to buy my book. So the newsletter idea is brilliant. I'd love to work with you on it. Should we organise a chat for Monday just because I've got a call at 3.30 and you said you've got another one this afternoon as well. Yeah, but I was so, beginning to enjoy this now. and Okay, fine, you can go. All right, all right, cool. I just told you... My life story, and now you want to go. Okay, fine. That's how you work. Cool. Nice. All right. You've got my calendar, right? Yeah, do you want me to pop in there? Yeah, that'd be amazing. But I'm yeah. glad you like this, and then maybe when, you know, you know, let, 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 it, let it mull in your head or whatever, 
And then pretty much after this, we can sit down. I I'm more than happy to fund this and make sure that it, it works. And you caught me or whatever it is. Um, but I want to work with somebody that I feel like I can get along with. And, and yeah. I, th I think that has been established. I mean, obviously, yeah, maybe you were faking it. I don't know. Now you're telling me it's wrong. And, you know. Yeah. I, I, I want to meet your wife, though, at some stage on one of our calls. I've got to meet my fellow Italian kindred spirit. Ah, she's, she's in there somewhere. Or, nah, she hasn't gone to pick up the kids. Yeah, she, she'll be in there somewhere. Yeah, trying to trying to work out the thermal mix or trying to work out some... <laughs> I don't know. Life is so good for that lady, man. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm here slaving my way, you know what I mean? And nobody even talking brings to, it. Talking to women in Sydney about newsletters and Frank oh. Kern and Italian Sebastian Maniscalco and oh, mama mia. This was a good call. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. It's been a great way to finish the Friday afternoon. Almost. I've got one more to go. Oh, I, I hope, I don't know if they're going to be able to top this. I think I'm going to cancel the rest of my day. Because, yeah, why ruin something good? You know? They're not going to top it. There's no way. Who can top this? <laughs> Fantastic. I really, really appreciate your time today. And, um, I mean, obviously, obviously, this is the first time we're chatting, but I feel like I've known you forever, you know? So, thank you. <laughs> thank you for creating that space for that to happen, yeah? Hey, Ditto. So, I'm going to jump off and I'll go book us a time to chat on Monday. Yep. So have a think for me if you don't, if, I mean, I know you'd already have a vision, but think about what you'd love to convey in your newsletter. Absolutely. Yeah, and then let's have a chat about, you know, how that looks on Monday. That'd be great. There you go. Well, this was really good. I'm not going to say bye because then maybe I'm going to start feeling sad. I'm just going to, I'm just going to not be there. All right. <laughs> and then, and then open up my eyes and it's Monday. All right. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Speak soon. Ciao, ciao, bye.